and this is Simco with a sim play of Aviary Attorney. This is done in special because um, the one true heir got me this for Christmas and I, I absolutely love it. Um, I've actually tried recording it a few times but for some reason the audio keeps cutting out so I'm gonna try to keep myself limited to uh, like one court case at a time. Um, so we'll see how that goes. We're going to start over. Can I start over? No, I can't start over. Now this takes place in alternate reality for Paris. January 1st, 1848. Chateau Crenret of Baron Is that Is that Monsieur Crenry? Oh mon dieu Dame Catterline, what have you done? Act one A Cat with Claws And my own little fluffy kitty is here to cheer us on. It's midday already. Where on earth is that featherhead? Well, well, well. Look who finally decided to get up. Haven't you heard what they say about the early bird falcon? Ugh, it's too early for worms. Past the Carbonier Savion. There'll be time for that later. We've got some business to handle first. Business? A letter arrived while you were sleeping. I haven't opened it yet. It's probably just more junk mail. Go ahead, Sparrison. You may have the honors. All right. <laughs> Dear Monsieur Falcon, I am writing to you today because my daughter, Dame Catterline, has been arrested for a crime she did not commit. She is being held at La Concierge Prison in, on the charge of murder, no less. Her trial is in three days' time. I hope the post doesn't take three days to get to you, because that would suck. I would be greatly in your debt if you would offer her your legal aid. Yours sincerely, Seigneur Pourtoire de Miao of de Miao Estate. Well, this is quite something. I know, your first serious client in months. Not just that, the de Miao Estate is well known for its exuberant wealth. Even if we cannot do much for Dame Catterline, his lordship will still reward us handsomely for our efforts. Wow. So I suppose you intend on defending Dame Catterline in court? Uh, of course. Of course. It would be foolish to let such a good opportunity slip through our feathers. Grab your coat, Sparrison. We're going to find our kitty client at La Concierge. Excellent. He had little hands. Little hands back there. Excellent. My derriere was getting tired from all this sitting around. Oh, I, but I better file a wise near Dim Yao's letter first. One moment, Falcon. It's been added to my evidence folder. Look. Uh, yay, okay. I can access that folder by clicking on the suitcase like I just did. Ah, nearly forgot my wallet. Wouldn't want to lose that. Again, I recall you losing it at the New Year's party. And at Christmas. Yes, alright, no need to make a list. Falcon has picked up his wallet. I can see how much money he has by clicking on it, like that. Let's make a move. This is the map. I use it like a map. Going between places costs a day, most of the time. For centuries, the infamous concierge prison has detained the accused and condemned alike. Falcon and Sparrowson step into the stone-cold foyer of Le Concierge Prison. Sullen-faced guards and visitors linger beneath me the medieval archways. Ah, the Concierge. They say this is the finest prison in the whole of France. The outer walls are impenetrable, the cells are spotless, the guards are well-mannered. Well, what do you want? Good day, Monsieur. I'm here to see Dame Caroline de Miao. I am due to represent her in court. Oh, you're her lawyer, huh? Fine, follow me. 
Well, what are you waiting for? Keep up. Such a cute little kitty. Sigh. My papa hasn't forgotten about me, has he? Dame Caroline de Miao, I presume. You've arrived. The fantastic lawyer, Monsieur Falcon, and his petite assistant, Sparrowson. My lady is knowledgeable. Don't. Don't talk like that, Sparrowson. Sorry. My papa told me that he would only hire the best lawyers in town. I'm flattered. But they weren't available at such short notice, so he hired the first people in the address directory. Oh. You see, Falcon, I told you listing under aviary attorney would pay off. Let's get down to business. Dame Caroline, could you fill us in on some details? Your father's letter was a bit brief. I will do my best. What is it you want to, to know? What happened? Exactly what happened on the night of the murder. Oh, let me think. It was Friday evening. Me and my papa had arrived at Chateau de Crenre, the home of the great Baron Rouraud. My, uh, my papa spent all evening talking with Monsieur Grenly and the Baron about uh, business stuff. Business stuff? Well, the three of them own a railway company together. So, all throughout dinner, they were talking about company shares and investments, but I really didn't understand most of it, because I'm a girl. And a cat. But after dinner, this man with a camera took our photograph. That was a lot more fun, because again, I'm a girl. And a cat. Sorry, a man with a what took your what? Camera! It's a very new gadget. A tiny bug sits in a box with a tiny tooth paintbrush and paints your picture very fast. <laughs> in ten minutes, poof, you have a perfect picture. Wow, technology is amazing. I don't think the lady's explanation is right, Spirison. Pshaw, let me believe. Still, the camera sounds like a very special device. I'll make a note of it. Well, the camera hasn't been added to my folder. Just a note about a camera. Please, continue, Dan Caroline. So, after we had the photograph, I went into the gardens to get some air, and that's when I found the body of Monsieur Granui. He was all ripped open. A housemaid saw me standing over the froggy Monsieur, and called for help, and then the police arrived. I'm actually not sure if I'm supposed to say Monsieur or Monsieur, so I'm gonna go with Monsieur, because that's what I always hear. Anyway, before I could say anything, I ended up here. It was such a blur. But at least they didn't take my... fur... coat. It must have been terrifying. It wasn't so bad. My t papa told me how to be a brave cat. Was there something else you wanted to know, Monsieur Falcon? Who all was there? Dame Caroline, who attended the banquet that evening? Well, there was me and my papa. My dearest maman couldn't make it. And there was Baron Rawr, who hosted the dinner, and his housemaid, uh, Caroline, I think she was called. And of course there was Monsieur Grandouille, until, well, you know, he died. And then there was Monsieur Robitio de Robinio, the man with the camera, but he was only there for a little while. Rob Robitio de Robinio. Robinio. Hmm. I think that was all. Was there anything else you wanted to ask? Did you see anything suspicious? Dame Caroline, did you see anything suspicious that evening? Suspicious? Like, um, maybe a guy lurking in the shadows, or a bloody murder weapon, or a note saying, I did it? Monsieur Falcon, I do believe you are looking for an easy answer. You got me. I did not see anything, I'm afraid. The evening was very normal, the food was delicious, the conversation was boring. It was all very ordinary until the incident. I see. Wait, Falcon, you missed something of huge importance. I did? Dame Caterline, you said the food was delicious. But you didn't say what food it was. You and your damn stomach. Let me see. We had poached red herring to start, 
garnished with garlic butter. <laughs> you had a red herring. Perfect. Go on. The mar then a marbled steak served perfect bloody rare. Glorious. Falcon, write this down. What? This can't possibly be relevant to the case. Write it all down, please, for me. You have hands. I have hands, but they're stuck behind my back. Fine, fine. Red herring has been added to you. <laughs> has been added to your evidence folder. Bloody rare steak has also been added. Sparrowson, remind me not to let you talk to clients on an empty stomach. Come to think of it, I did find it a little strange that we weren't given any cutlery. No cutlery? Even for the steak? No. You would think that the great baron of Chateau Corinier would have gorgeous silverware, but there was none to be seen. That is a little peculiar. Was there anything else you wanted to know, Monsieur Falcon? No, I think that'll be all. So what's the plan now, Falcon? The way I see it, we have two tasks. We should head to Chateau Crunier and try to see the scene of the murder for ourselves. And we should try to track down the supposed photographer, Monsieur Robert Robin. I'm not going to keep saying that. Two days for two tasks. Sounds doable. But we should get back and get some rest first. We have a lot of work ahead of us. Wait, Monsieur Falcon, before you go. You do believe my story, don't you? I believe in justice. Dame Catterline, I believe that a fair trial can draw the truth from any situation. I believe in justice. That's good to hear. You're not wrong, Falcon, but that's not what the lady needed to hear. You might want to work on being less of a... how to put it? Fils de pute. Which I don't know what that means. If serving justice makes me a fils de pute, then I will wear that title proudly. Pain in the ass, maybe? Dame Catterline, Monsieur Grenby, Baron Rurgrel. These names are all getting a bit confusing, aren't they? Not particularly. Well, it is for me. I'm gonna start compiling a, f <laughs> a Facebook <laughs> so I can keep track of who everyone is. A what? A Facebook. It's a collection of people's names, pictures, and descriptions in one easy-to-carry catalog. I think I understand. The name could use a little work, though. <laughs> Decade or centuries before a little sparrow invented the Facebook. Sparrowson has started compiling a Facebook. <laughs> you can access a list of people you have met anytime by clicking on the book symbol. Let's make a move. The next day. All right, that's going to be it for this time, I think. Join me next time for more. <laughs> Sim plays aviary attorney. Uh, send me stuff so that I can put it on this page. Um, hit the like button. Send friends. All that stuff. All right, guys. I will see you on Vox.